Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm doing this um, Earth Shaker, Earth Shatter um, video. It's my first character of this lake. Uh, yep, my name is War T underscore T War Cry. And before I'm gonna introduce my map, uh, my character further, we're gonna do two maps. Okay, one on Park and the other one with Zana. And let's go. So Earth Shatter is really a, a it's a new skill gem for this lick and it works well with War Cries. So let's just play. Um, it's not very clunky. It's just that every time I slam, I need to use a war cry to kill my enemies quickly. So this is a T16 map. I'm gonna go back to Zona later. Okay, there's just two slams and I kill the boss. Damage is really good with good AOE. So, Okay, I'm busy to find the rest. Okay, let's do this. This is T16 Blight, but there's no unit, so should be fine. This is my first time recording this as well using the software. I hope I don't lag. The bossing potential for this build is really good as well, as you can uh, nuke as well. Why? Because I can slam 3 times on the floor. 1, 2, 3, and release everything at one go. That will maximize my damage. Alright, we still got Zana to do. So, if you want to look at the mods, can take that, fine. Okay, let's go back to town. Let me tell your future. See you soon. Let me tell you, fate 
awaits you. Let's go back to Zana. Oh. Okay. Alright, let's see what Zana meant we should do. I haven't done this map yet and it's corrupted so I think I'm just gonna do this just for my achievements okay let's go and they put for bridge. You can see from my cooldown, I'm rotating each war cry. So I have two war cries. One is intimidating, the second one is seismic, and the third one is a daring cry. Oh, that's the, whatever this thing, the bristle depths. That's all. I, I could have used Berserk before that, but it's not needed because uh, yeah, we overkill things. Okay, let's continue. The damage is so good that you don't really have to even use spots. Your plus. There's an exalted shards. So that's another 0.5 EX. 0.05 EX. Okay, I only find one EX in this lake at the moment. I'm 
mana is a bit low, that's why I have to leech most of the time otherwise. Yeah, and I don't really do much of my harvest, I just plant T1 seeds and that's it because it's a waste of time. So, caster, caster, physical. Hmm. Right, let's do your damage. Well, okay. first spell. So we've got block spell. Nope. 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 Doesn't work. Forget it. I can do this. to <coughs> waste it. Okay, It's about four slams with my cries in between. Um, I'm just lazy to um, fast three time and just explode at one go. All right, so that's it. <coughs> Sorry about the poor editing skills because um, this is my first time. Hopefully, okay. Oh, but I'll just want um, let's just make my inventory look a bit better before I start introducing my build. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk share with you my items. Um, so for my items, uh, I only have three uniques for this build. The first one is this. Uh, the Beyond's Dirge, which is this Cold Axe with Warcry, which I find it. I really want to use this weapon ever since it, it's in PoE for a very long time. Um, since there's a Warcry buff to it, uh, I decided to use this for my Warcry build. And since it has a special mechanism with Earth Shatter, Earth Shatter means that um, every time when you slam, when you cast a Warcry, it will cost your spike to um, disperse from it to shatter and it costs uh, huge damage and you can stack it you can stack it three times two three and then you release it all at one go the damage is huge um, you can kill almost any boss in the one time once or two burst damage and that's what a shatter and as you can see from my item it has this two um, character in uh which is fortify and life gain on hit. 
I spent uh, about three exalts during the third week of this lake. So, it's honestly, it's quite a good considering it's a six link together with life gain on here and 45. This is like an eight link um, weapon. And because of that, I don't have to rely on a body armor to be six link. I just need four link and four link for this um, setup for my armor. But never mind, let's talk about the next uh, unique that I spent, which is the most expensive one in my current build, which is Pandemonious. And of course, I put I allocate true strike, but if I have the money, I will probably go for more, which I think I would probably soon. Um, Pandemonious, when I bought this, um, I bought the pre um, the Hal Halkion, which is um, before you merge it with the blessings. Uh, I spent about three point five ex on this amulet, and it's rather okay. Yeah, and decent stats, decent mod, and yeah, and the third unique that I'm use is Azir's Promise because of a little bit of uh, elemental damage convert to extra chaos, since my build is mostly coal damage and coal penetration. So I'm making use of these three uniques, and the rest of my rest is not very fantastic. As you can see, this one is probably very cheap. The reason why I get this is because of the Earth Shatter um, Lab mod increased forty percent damage, which is okay. I think I spent about one in eight, uh, quite cheap actually, about thirty C or less. But it doesn't have good uh, mods like don't have very good resist. I went for life and a bit of accuracy and intelligence, and um, that's about it. And come to this body armor, I bought it 6 sockets, but it's only 5 link. Uh, it's not really that important because the setup for this is slightly different. I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna talk about my gem links later. So as you can see, I went more for life, um, life mods and of course resist mods along the way. Next, focus on my gloves. I spent this about 80 chaos due to the 20% increased melee damage. Um, and the code the cold damage to attacks with life and good uh, resist on it and come my my sh my boots and my boots uh, I found it without the coal and lightning um, resist mods in there in them I crafted them through the harvest league uh, t1 and that's how I get this boots which I think it can fetch a few ex um, however I don't really need the mod on physical damage as extra fire damage because uh, I'm using this cold damage X. The physical damage is very little to be quite noticeable. Yep, and my two rings is just life, a bit of resist, uh, cold damage, and elemental damage with attack skill to boost my damage even more. And I concentrate mostly on life so that I can have more life on myself. Okay, more life, more damage, and my belt as well. Life and you realize the resist is not really that much in my build. Okay, and the most important one is this um, crafted suffix that I put in, which is War Cries cannot exert travel skills. This is essentially one point in your skill points, but you don't have to add it, uh, along the way. Um, you might waste about a few um, passives, which you, which is might be which might be important. So next, we're gonna talk about my links so first of all of shatter followed by pulverize followed by close combat elemental damage with attack support inspiration and fist of war on top of that with the life gain on hit and fortify which give me enough damage more than much damage and fortify um fortifies me against damage so it's really good and as you can see, the DPS now is only 53k, but it increase if I use Warcry. Why? Because of the mod. 150% um, increase elemental damage if I use a Warcry recently, which is really good. And not forgetting about my cries, 
which the first one is Inti Intimidating Cry, where it's potentially double my damage. Exited attacks deal double damage. For the next two melee attacks I perform, however, in one of my skill points, I add one, so I have three melee attacks on my exerted attacks. Um, next would be Seismic Cry. Seismic Cry also deal 30% more damage, as you can see. And... Yeah, more area and whatsoever. And the third cry that I use is Enduring Cry. Because uh, it's good to have a bit of sustain with your life regeneration and a bit of endurance charge. And... Yeah, and your buff grants you more elemental resist and more physical damage reduction, which is quite good to consider. And of course, to link it up with second wind support so that you have enough time to cast one after the other so you can go slam cry slam cry slam cry and it keeps on repeating itself you um you can use back um the cry the intimidating cry after one run or two runs and whatsoever it has enough time to cool down itself that's why we put a second wind support and we use three cries because two cries is just too short to recover the the cool down so the second link is my Christ. And the next one we're gonna talk about is my aura. So precision aura increase my crit rate and crit strike chance and accuracy, which is important because if not we won't have much accuracy. Next is blood and sand to increase my area damage in blood blood stance. And the third one is skitterbots. Now why do I use skitterbots? It's because of two reasons. One it chills nearby, nearby enemies and shock at the same time. So because it's shock, you increase damage. And why chill is because I'm not going to rely on my slam, my f initial slam to deal that chill because I'm using cold damage, right? So I'm not going to use that to chill my mon my the boss. I'm going to rely on skitterbots for that chill so that I can have that blind chill enemies on hit or... Um, to chill them further, reducing the action speed by 30% as well as the cold damage penetration. That's why I use Skitterbots. And the third one is War Banner just to increase my accuracy further. Not that much on the damage wise. Okay, and the third falling socket is my Steel Skin where I put in my left click button so that whenever I walk I have this um, Steel Skin buff which is a bit helpful in a way. Followed by Lip Slam, Ancestral War Chief, which link up to faster attacks, just to get around faster. Right? And the next falling setup I'm going to talk about is uh, Cast when Damage Taken, together with Cold Snap. If I want to, I also can use a Wild Cold Snap at the same time. Um, assassin Mark to just apply a curse. I can choose not to use Assassin Mark because uh, I don't. But I want to just kill faster, so apply the curse to kill. And the last one is Frostbomb to reduce the life regeneration and whatsoever. And cold exposure as well. And the next one is Blood Rage to have that frenzy charge along while while mapping because it boosts your it boosts your mapping speed. Definitely. And a bit of damage. And the t last one is Berserk. So Berserk, when do I use it? Especially for um, bosses who have a bit of spawn time is first of all, um, before I even do this, I will work raw on the unique um, unique bosses. It would sh it should charge me up all the way to 60 uh, rage count. And after that, what I, do, what I did, what I'll be doing is slam three times. On my berserk, on all my fast, and explode with a war cry, and it should almost bring down the boss to less than fifty percent, or if not, I should kill it almost. And that's for my build. We're gonna talk about the flash, um, a bit of life flash, which I don't really use it most of the time. I would rather use enduring cry for that life regen 
over one second, which is very, very, very sustainable. Um, diamond flies for more crit chance, and uh, immune myself from curses. Um, of course, a more movement speed, which is important because yeah, your mapping would be much for efficient, and anti freeze. More damage and more leech. You can replace this with something else, but this one has the. I can change it with wise oak. If I want to, um, but I prefer more leech. And the fifth one is a bit more damage from sulfur flask, and I chose increase attack speed during effect and increase the effect and reduce uh duration. So as you can see, I don't have any anti poison in my. Build my pentathlon. I don't even bother to do the rest of it. You can choose whichever you want. So next, I'm going to talk about my passives. So for my ascendancy, as you can see, I didn't even bother going for the rage um, ascendancy. I saw the bleeds as well. So the main thing that I I went for first is definitely Warbringer because when you sacrifice your war cry you deal 50% more damage to your exerted attack. That is really huge. Yeah. And at the same time, um, I went for this Pain River. And why do I go for Pain River? Is because I do not want to, I don't want to bother adding this uh, Mana Leech. Yeah, it's a bit far, even though it's just 4 points. But, Pain River helps me to have more attack speed if I'm being hit uh recently and I can leech life and it provides me more sustain more sustain throughout boss fights as well. Okay, next is of course Flora Sav Savagery whereby I increase more damage. Okay, and I'm definitely gonna do more uh critical strikes so it adds more more damage to me. Uh and lastly to increase my damage expect of the carnage or whatever you pronounce it. Um I do take in more damage that's why I need to have a higher life pool and to and do more damage and the reason why i don't go for blitz is because of your exit attack and together with fist of war support because fist of war only um boosted every 1.8 seconds so if you attack too fast your fist of war is a bit redundant you might as well change it to another um, skill gem if you want to okay the reason why i don't add this right of ruin even though it doesn't, uh, the most important um, thing to add this skill is because of the stun that you might have. So by adding this, you can't be stunned if you have at least twenty five range. However, due to this war bringer, you're gonna, you're not gonna sustain your twenty five range always, and because your attack speed is not very fast, you're gonna slam and raw, slam and raw. You're not gonna recover your reach by hits so it's no point adding this right of ruins and even though 60 rage would give me 60 percent attack damage in my opinion it's not worth it because you're gonna lose it most of the time so i rather we uh war cry and then we use berserk rather than to rely on right or ruin for the extra boost in damage and speed and whatsoever so i'm not gonna so that's why i just only go for the I'm not going for bliss and right for runes at all. Right, so for this build, what is essential is first of all, when I start to path myself, uh, I aim for Warcry's um, Warcry skill notes. So some of the more, so these are the Warcry's. Recovery speed, of course. Area effect as well. I don't bother going for natural authority because to me, uh, it's too much skill points to reach to here and you, they only do lesser damage by 10% and reduce movement speed. And it's not worth in that sense because you're going to walk right everywhere. 5% increase percent, increase damage for 4 points is not worth, worth it. So I don't do that. I don't even add call to arms because once you add call to arms, you can't use second win on your war cry. Okay. And you only have, you only can use one war cry. And they have shed uh cooldown so no matter what as you can see my fastest cooldown time is only 2.56 seconds 
and to war cry every 2.56 seconds even though it's instant is insufficient to sustain myself in this build the next war cry is to go for this remove an ailment which is really good because i can remove myself from bleeding that's why i don't even bother to use my um, life flask at all and it also remove um, poison um, cold damage shock or whatsoever this is really a very nice note to add um, okay because I'm, I don't want to waste my one point on this wall cry it cannot exert um, travel skills which means that whenever I do lit slam if I don't have this uh, combat control what happens is that I'm gonna waste one exert attack so over here as you can see when I use my exert attack um, my icon shows three attacks and five attacks so right now if I remove this okay I'm gonna use lip slam and it will reduce it's not that good because the damage isn't huge at all so by using this my exit attack won't be spent on this useless lip slam so it's important to have that note while you use lip slam, lip slam to travel around other than this this is the most important note out of all the war cries is to increase your additional attack so no matter what when you rinse between these three cries your intimidating cry will always be up. So next one we use seismic cry and enduring cry. Now when I use intimidating cry again, I will be back up to three counts. So by increasing this to three attacks, it really helps a lot with your damage. So that's all about for the war cry uh, notes. And next, the most important one is the life nodes around here. I went up for life nodes and a bit of damage and... And, yep. Okay. And I went for crit nodes, crit multiplier. And two hand weapons, X and cool damage. As well as this, as well. So, as you can see, it's just, it's not that complicated. For my passive i could have gone for more clusters but heck yeah i'm not gonna waste my time trying to do that and i defeated cyrus twice okay i died a few times because i'm not really used to the mechanics for cyrus yet however it's very manageable and that's almost about this build overall it's quite cheap this pandemonious is about 3.5 EX, this is about 3 EX, and considering all the items add up, it's less than 10 EX. And you don't have to have these um, good um, items to start off with. You can start off with as low as, most important is a 6 link uh, Beyond Bridge, which you can probably get within like 20C right now. I have another 6 link uh, over here. Uh, I just bought this because I to start off with but in the end I bought a nice decent um, base damage stats together with two awesome um, corruptor in place so that's about my build if I want to go I would probably go for this primal force for more damage I also can go for more crit rate and crit, crit strike chance and multiplier at the same time over here it costs a lot it's not that yeah this build is quite easy to use the hot key it's quite easy and most of the time i don't even have to use my ancestral war chief and valko stat it's more than sufficient to kill so that would free up a few um few sockets if I want to and yeah so even though this X looks a bit like meh but I really like it because it's cold damage and I think this is the main highlight of this build whereby you get this X and you play around it with Warcry and yeah so that's about my build and I hope you would like this maybe I'll do more videos on like um, huge box, huge boss fight with this, with perhaps maybe a conqueror and Cyrus next time.
if I remember and I'm not bought by this lake already. I'm almost done with this lake. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just like a bit bored already. I, I'm not gonna do much of my harvest. As you can see in my secret growth, it's quite pathetic because um, I don't even bother to plant T2 seeds. There are some over here, but it's just it's just too much time. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna waste my time on that. Yep, not too different. So that's about this about my build, and this is my only character in my harvest league, only one. So yeah, I didn't create any other, and I think that's about it. So I hope you enjoy this Earth Shatter Coal build with four cries, and yeah. So, yep, see you around, and I hope you like it. Bye!